What is up, players? It's Warboss Tay back up in this mug. I wanted to let you know that the video that I posted up on Twitter, the live stream where I kind of talk about this figure, all the different paints I used, and basically how to paint her, it is not there anymore. It's gone. So uh, that's very unfortunate. And uh, that means that um, I, I wanted to do another video where I really go in depth about the, the, the paints and the colors I used and my method for painting the cloth on this figure, which I think is, is pretty important. So the Wood Elf Spellsinger model, just to go back over it, is a, uh, it's an older model from Games Workshop. This model is actually in metal. They redid it in fine cast when they tried to move all of the old figures to fine cast, but there's just something about this older model. A lot of the metal models I find when you paint them, they just feel so much more like art pieces. And uh, I just feel so much more gravitas when I'm painting them. So uh, let's go over the, the colors and kind of my, my philosophy on painting them. This figure is gonna go with a commission of other wood elves. And um, just to show you a little bit of uh, comparison, the other wood elves I'm painting are very much in the summer theme. They've got a lot of greens, they've got a lot of browns. The dryads are all going to be this uh, gray bark kind of uh, finish. And uh, all the glade guards are going to be various shades of greens, bright greens, uh, more drab greens, different shades of browns. And uh, most of the commission is actually just a bunch of greens and browns. So when I was painting or thinking about painting the, the spell singer here, I thought, well, how can I create a color that's not going to just show up out of nowhere for her robes? And I thought, well, blue seems to be a good color because it will contrast nicely. It'll pop out from all the other greens and beiges and browns, and uh, it looks really, really cool. So I incorporated it in the rest of the commission by also including it on the standard here for the uh, Wild or uh, Glade Rider. And uh, it's basically the same colors that I've used, which I'm going to talk about uh, now. So to do the, the, the blue dress, what I did was I base coated it with Sotek Green. And Sotek Green is this beautiful turquoise color. I think it's the new Hawk Turquoise. And uh, you just do an even coat of that all over the entire cloth area. I wasn't sure actually how I would paint this brown bark. And, uh, or if I would paint it bark at all or just make it an extension of the cloth. And I decided in the end to go with the dark dark uh, tree brown down there. So after the Sotek green dries, you're going to uh, shade the model, or shade all the cloth rather with, I use Drakenhof Nightshade, and uh, you could also use Known Oil, or you could even um, just water down some Cantor Blue, which is the darkest blue, and use that as a kind of a glaze. But um, after that dried, I repainted Sotek green, keeping some of the really dark colors of that Drakenhof Nightshade in the uh, recesses there in the folds. And then I highlighted up by adding in some Temple Guard blue. This is where you start to get a little bit tricky because when you're painting your highlights, you're going to be painting them in uh, following the same direction of the cloth. So rather than uh, slapping on the Sotek green, like following the cloth and then doing the highlights like horizontally or in a different direction, I try to follow the line of the cloth when I'm painting the highlights. And this is especially important when you're doing things like here at the back. You can really see the pattern of the individual brush strokes popping out from the cloth. And that's really important because it creates almost a sense of flow, like uh, water cascading down the back of the cloth there. And um, I really, really enjoy that effect. So to create that effect, we're going to be building up the colors. And we're going to be building up the colors by using Temple Guard Blue and mixing it. You can mix in any kind of uh, whitish gray color. I used Perfectly enough, white gray from Vallejo, but if you don't have Vallejo paints, you could also use Othuan gray. Othuan gray is a fantastic off-white color that's just slightly whiter than Celestra gray, and uh, it works perfectly for doing these highlights. You don't want to go 
too bright too soon you kind of want to build up the highlights and the way you do that is just by finding the the folds of the cloth and building the highlights there leaving the darker colors there in the folds and the recesses while wherever the cloth bunches up that's where you want to build the highlights up I also try to keep the brightest highlights like the pure white gray on the edge of the cloth but not along the whole edge I try to see where the cloth folds the most so here and here and here and uh, right here in the back that's where I added the brightest highlights the the thing is when you're painting and you're kind of new to highlighting or uh, new to painting at all it's often very very tempting to put highlights everywhere and to highlight the entire thing and uh, the trick is to restrain yourself enough so that when you do put those highlights in it creates a beautiful contrast between the dark and the light so that's how I did the blue cloth and um, because I talked about Celestia Grey, let's talk about the gloves. The gloves are supposed to be white, but when I shaded them, I shaded them using... Oh, do I even have it with me now? I don't think I do. I used a color called the Fang. And the Fang is a dark blue-gray um, layer color, but when you water it down, a lot of the colors that I use now, I instead of using shades, I like to water down layer colors because uh, when the wash is dry, sometimes they leave this very oily, shiny residue that is not the um, easiest to, to paint over or to work with. So when you water down or you thin down using like a Lamian medium uh, layer paint, you get this really fun to work with glaze that uh, does much of the same job as a wash, but also um, doesn't dry with a very oily, shiny, residue. So with the shade there, I built back up right down the center using uh, my white gray, or I think I used celestial gray, and then I added white gray slowly until it was almost completely all white gray. And again, the trick is we want to leave that blue gray shading in the cracks, in the folds, in the recesses, and we only want to build up our highlight color on the edges and where the cloth bunches up. The next thing I want to talk about is the staff. Now I decided with the staff I wanted to make her a brunette rather than a blonde and I also wanted to have her staff break away from her skin color and her hair color and I wanted the staff to be the same color as her little crown so or her circlet on her head. So what I did was I used Rackarth Flesh, painted the whole thing and then when that dried I used Seraphim Sepia to uh, shade that. When you put Seraphim Sepia, any kind of sepia tone, onto a bone color, it creates this really cool looking aged uh, bone kind of effect or petrified bark. So when I built up the colors again with Rackart Flesh, I stuck to the highest areas. Again, I stuck to where the material kind of bends and then I, I left that sepia shade uh, around the fingers and in the um, in the recesses and on the sides and at the bottom of the staff. So no matter where you turn, you will see that Rackarth flesh bone color and you see a, a hint of that sepia tone without getting too crazy. Finally, I want to talk about her face and um, the, uh, I guess we could talk a little bit about the, the leaves. The leaves are basically just warp stone green. I used uh, Castellan green underneath that as just as a base color, just because it's nice and uh, thick and solid. And then I used warp stone green and I highlighted with moot green. And moot green is a very bright yellowish green color so that when you use that as the top color, it makes a beautiful uh, rich green yellow. The hair, the bark was all painted with uh, Rhinox Hide and then highlighted with XV88 and then some Steel Legion Drab. The most characteristic part of this model I think is the face and the skin on the arms. So using Kislev Flesh I made a base coat and then to create the depth and the definition like right here you can see under her arm there's her armpit, the shoulder, the um, <laughs> right, right behind her, the little lady bits there. You create that by using Raikland Flesh Shade, but watering it down. 
and then slowly building up the color with two or three progressive coats of Kislev Flesh. When you use Kislev Flesh and then you add a little bit of Rackarth Flesh or some Ivory or some Pallid Witch Flesh to it, that's where your highlights are. And again, you want to use your highlights only in the upper areas where the light is going to reflect the most off of. You want to see that darker Kislev Flesh and you want to definitely see that a flesh shade in the shadows. So when we go to our face, that's the most detailed part of this model. And because it's the most detailed part of the model, we really have to focus on uh, painting it in smooth, multiple coats rather than just slapping on the paint in one go. Oh my gosh, if you did that, the, the paint would dry in the where where the eye meets the nose. It would cover up the detail on the mouth. You would really lose all of the definition of the face. And because the face is such a cool, beautiful sculpt, that's um, just really not a, a good thing to do. So using Kislev Flesh again, shading it with Rayquan Flesh Shade, building it back up, I use my off-white I believe uh, the ivory or the pallid witch flesh, I added it to the Kislev flesh and then I really stuck to the center. So the bottom of the chin, the, the right above the upper lip, the nose and the eyebrows got the most highlight work and then the uh, cheeks, the cheekbones also got some. By doing that you leave a little bit of shade under the cheeks, uh, in the ears, down by the chin and it draws the focus so that it makes the face look slimmer and um, that creates a beautiful optical illusion there. Finally, for the makeup, I did just Doombo Brown on the lower lip, and uh, you don't wanna go on the upper lip too, or else it'll look kind of a uh, really cartoony and not realistic. Just a little bit of Doombo Brown lipstick on the bottom lip, and then for the eyeshadow, I used Sotek Green. Again, watered down a lot, so it's almost a glaze, and then just put on two or three coats of that, and um, let's see, if for her eyes, I used, uh, I did a cat's eye, which my lady boss said is basically just um, doing this shape. It's like a, almost like a sideways S. And um, it comes down at the center, goes up at the side. And the uh, the trick of using cat's eyes are that you never want it to be black. If, if you're doing a black cat's eye, it looks too dark. But using a dark brown kind of fools the eye into thinking that it's, uh, just a really dark brown eyeliner. With this model, you don't want to paint eyeballs on her because her, the slit is a little too small and you're not really going to get in there and get that detail that you want. You want her to look like she's looking down over her nose, very condescending, very imperious, very aloof and, uh, you know, wood elf-like. Just like any elf would look like a uh, would look at a human, you get that very arrogant expression, and you do that by doing a cat's eye, and um, or just like a, an eye that is a line rather than painting in the eyeball. All right, that's basically how I did it. The purple uh, amethyst gems is just done with a very simple Abaddon black base coat, and then using Sirius green and Jean Steeler green, doing uh, crescents that build up from the lower right hand side, just smaller, smaller crescents, and then a little dot of white paint in the upper left corner, and finally doing some gloss varnish to make it shine like that. Hope you guys enjoyed it. This video has been going on for, for a little while now, so I'm going to get out of here, but please let me know what you think. I love, love this model, <laughs> excuse me, and um, I, I really am happy that I got to paint it again. Sorry I didn't get a chance to do a tutorial with it. I didn't have my setup all done and I just wanted to whip this model out really quickly for commission. And uh, you might know from my channel that I'm doing a bunch of space sharks, some carcharodons and some wood elves, wrapping up a bunch of commissions uh, this month. So I, I hope you enjoyed this little video and please leave a comment below, hit the like button and uh, let me know what you think. If you have tips on how you do your female models, I would love to hear them. And um, yeah, just let me know what you think. And if you have anything to add, I would love to hear it. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you have a great day. Keep painting, keep those paint brushes moving. We'll see you in the next video.